because it so it kind of sets the context. And uh, uh, we've got a lot of great new stuff that's come in Windows 10 UAP. So we're going to do a comparison with that. So look at all of the new ways that we've uh, we've enhanced the app-to-app -app communication, we're acting on a lot of feedback we got from uh, developers and from our enterprise customers mm. and people. So we're adding a load of great stuff that really make it much easier to create. Um, apps that will cooperate with each, with each other, provide services with each, to each other, and great ways of, of creating a, like a suite of apps that are co collaborating and working together. All right, so we'll walk down memory lane here. Let's see what app-to-app -app communication was like in Windows 8.1. Okay, yeah, so two primary techniques here. So there's URI activation and protocol activation, mm. and they're, they're complementary. So the idea here is that the receiving app is uh, installed and in its manifest it declares that okay I will answer launch requests for a specific URI a, pro a particular protocol so in this example the protocol is sample app, sample colon. app colon that's right so you, you kind of cook up a, a, a your own pretend URI mm. that sort of thing okay um, similarly with file in the, the receiving app will say okay I can uh, handle files with a particular file extension like I, a PDF I, or yeah, something that's kind of an obvious one yeah mm -hmm. that's right so the idea here is that the uh, the sender just throws something out there they launch a URI which and you actually because with a URI it's not only the protocol which sort of says I want to send this to an app that knows how to handle sample app colon but then you obviously put a little bit of data in the query string as well so ah, you're, yeah. you're sending a limited amount of data from one app to another which will trigger some kind of action in the other app. It's sort of sent out into a black hole though, isn't it? I mean, you it send is. it out, you don't know if it's working or not. The user may not have something installed for that protocol. They are sent to the store, or maybe they just decline going to the store. Well, this is it. And it was by design, but the idea here is that the user could have a, n a number of different apps that they've installed to handle a particular thing. Um, or they have a particular preference. They like this PDF reader compared to this other PDF reader. Uh, yeah. So you've got choice there. So the, that just allows a, it's a kind of loose a decoupling between the sender and the receiver. Both good and bad, because yeah. if you were relying on sending, let's say, to Sample App, but I also submitted an app to the store with Sample App as a protocol, yeah. it doesn't reliably go to the one you're expecting. It could go to mine, which is, you know, yeah. totally. That's right. I mean, if. if, if you have got two apps installed on your device, on, on phone anyway, and coming on, on Windows, big Windows as well, it will um, it put up a disambiguation dialogue. So it basically asks you, oh, I've got two apps here that know how to handle this. Which one do you want to send it to? And you as the sender or the invoker, you don't have any control. No, that's right. All right, so, so that's one way. Yeah, and this was by design. That was by design. And then the, the other kind of way as well, another kind of decoupled way is the, what we call the share contract. So the share contract is, again, this way that it's, it's uh, it called a contract because it allows a sender to sort of throw mm -hmm. out some content there, uh, a package of you know, data or images um, and or images, that sort of thing, and then allows the user to decide where that content uh, goes. Yeah. So they can choose to share it with... Similar problem to protocol activation, shared with whom you don't have any control oh, over that's that. Right. And this is by design. So it allows the user to stay in control. But that doesn't satisfy That's everybody. Windows 8. That's We're Windows 8. in Windows 10. Things are different. Things are different. So yeah, we had a lot of feedback saying, oh, you know, that's kind of okay. Ah. But, uh, but we, well, particularly I enterprises. I wonder who you're impersonating there. That's interesting. It's, <laughs> it's very precise. It's just, it's just what I hear on the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got some new stuff answering the come to these some of these feature requests uh, ah, yeah. so we've added loads of stuff to our app to our communication um, you can obviously launch a specific app so this is where mm. the sender is saying okay I want you to launch an app that knows how to handle protocol sample app yeah but actually I want specifically that app that particular one by this publisher or by this particular name. So, so there's, no, there's no ambiguous calling. It is specific to only one. this one. That's right, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So I might call out to you to handle all of my fulfillment for my yep. store, and I know it's you, not somebody else who might be hijacking your protocol. Exactly, exactly. Um, and the second kind of new enhancement is being able to send a, a file token. So this is where you can send a, uh, in, you, you actually have uh, a file in your local storage, a big file. Uh, you can send, you can kind of tokenize it and send that token off to the sender and they can then uh, get access directly to that file. And to be clear, you're not sending a file because that could be very large. Yep. This is just the token that includes 
all the access ACL that you need in order to sure. access it. Sure. And we had, you know, this was, um, we had file associations before in 8.1, and they would send the file out there. Um, and, uh, uh, but it would actually copy the whole file across. So this is like, the file stays with the sender, if you like, and you send a reference, an to access token to the other end. So it's Big cleaner. improvement, especially on low-end devices. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. The third one is launch for results. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, so... Uh, Very gonna, similar to launch the protocol activation. Yeah, but this is a kind of a two-way thing. So this is, this is the thing. If you wanted to send something to another app, and then they did some processing, and then they wanted to send the results back to you, there was actually no clean way of doing that in yeah. 8.1. You had to kind of have back-to-back -back protocol, uh, protocol. So you'd have sample app colon going one way, mm. and then the reverse would be sample app response colon or something. So you kind of you kind of nothing have to transactional. You couldn't no. trust that it would work. No. Yeah. So again, this is another being a big ask that people wanting to let's just have a clean way. I want to send the stuff and get the result. I need to know. You know, a payments processor, for example, I need to know what happened. Did the payments processing app, did the payment go through? So when yeah. the control comes back to the sending app, they want to know, did the user actually buy it or not? You know, so this is the kind of thing. Makes sense to me. And the fourth big feature uh, around app to app communications is this thing called app services. So app services is uh, the idea that you have um, a background task. So this is without, the other ones have all been UI-less, ui based. Yes. So you launch another app and the other app gets launched and shows its UI and then eventually with launch results it calls back, back and you're transferred back into the UI of the original app. App services is in it's exactly like web services but on device. Mm, okay. uh, we're not going to go into any more detail on in this session there's a lot to talk about. Um, it's a very interesting very exciting technology and we're going to cover that another time. Basically you get to talk to another app's background task. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, it is. So loads of really great stuff. Okay, how, let's look at each of those and how they work in uh, each of those uh, spe specific scenarios. First of all, the launch URI async to a specific app. So, um, quite simple. You have to new up a launcher options, uh, op, uh, create a new, a new instance of a launcher options, and that has a property on it called target application package family name. And that you set to this a magic name. What is a, what is a package family name? Well, I mean, a package family name is given to me whenever I submit to the store. Yep. Even though I do have a default one that's given as soon as I say file new project. So that allows me to debug it. But if I'm looking for my family name, the store gives me that unique name. And what's great about it coming from the store, it's globally unique. Yeah, this is right. Because part of that, that name is like when you associate your app with the store, you've got a developer account. Uh, so they know it's uniquely you as that app publisher. So the name that you get back is unique, is unique, yeah, globally unique. So. Uh, so you know what app it is because this is its 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 PFN. You then use that uh, that name in your launcher options object, and then simply launch URA sync, which is exactly the same as we had before. Pass the URI, but you pass the options object with it as well. Yeah, optional parameter that you very can very easy. Yeah, and the URI can include. Speaking your of screen. optional parameter, whenever I call launch URI, you can see I can also send a file, and so I can include in those options um, my family name, like you can see here. But I can also fetch a token for a file, include that in a value set, and just where I said before it was launch URI, or where you said before yeah. launch URI, pass the URI, comma, then the options. I can also say comma payload that I'm sending along as well. Yep. And so you can see it's not specific to just a file. This is a whole value set that I get to send across. It could be a pretty large um, key value dictionary. Yeah, it's about, I think, 100, 100 kilobytes max mm. size. Yeah, it's pretty serious. It's, it's, which is pretty serious. Yeah, the value set is a new type that came out with 8.1. So it's, yeah, it's just like you say, it's a string object dictionary. So anything that object needs to be serializable into, into a string format so it can be passed across. But it's a valuable, uh, a valuable way of passing uh, structured data across from one app to another. Now, there was this idea of I launch a protocol and I still don't know if there's anything that can handle it you know, for the user to use. Yeah, so this is the thing. So if normally, uh, if, you try, if you launch URI async and the, there is no app installed to actually handle that, so the user hasn't gone ahead and already installed an app that knows how to handle Instapaper or whatever, then 
the, the, the platform itself will just put up a, a dialog to the user saying, I'm sorry you don't have anything installed to handle this, would you like to go to the store and find an appropriate app? And if you say yes, it will take you off and display to you a filtered list of apps that have registered to know that can handle that. So protocol. that's the Windows 8 behavior. Yeah, and there will still be it still be the behavior now uh, if you don't do something else. So the whole point of this uh, other, this new API called Query URI Support Async ah. is that the sender can discover programmatically up front and, and preempt this uh, this kind of go this dialogue to the user. So it means the sender can actually do its own UI to the user or, or provide some other way. For example, in an enterprise scenario, you could direct it to direct the user to a share or something to install a, a, a side-loaded enterprise app, for example. So, so you can just preempt all of this. Uh, I, I, I want to say it's not a black store. hole, right? No. Where you get to say, hey, don't forget, user, you're going to have to install this before you go any further. That's right. That's pretty right. nice. Yeah, it is pretty nice. So a lot of rich support for that. Uh, last one I said, we're not going to go into a lot of details on this one, but this is app services where you're, you can have, um, the idea here is that the uh, app is installed on the device. Um, it may have, a, it may have a, a UI ahead, you know, it may have a, an interactive UI with it as well, but the key bit, the important bit, is its background task. So I get to talk directly to the background task. Yeah. It can process whatever it needs to in the security context of the other app. Exactly, and it's very exciting because the background task effectively is, is long-lived, so it, it's kind of there, sitting mm. there, available. Once it's invoked, it just sits there, and you can have a chatty exchange going on. So uh, it's, it's awesome because you, the background task, uh, you, can, you can build up, you can it, install apps that can do specific things, and uh, it means the call, client apps don't have to repeat implementing the same behaviors all the time, so they can just call on a, a barcode scanning service or a, uh, I don't know, a, a, a cache service for, to, for file access to an enterprise, all sorts of things. I mean, loads of scenarios that you can think of. URI activation is pretty simple. Um, Andy, I think it'd be a lot easier if we just showed them in a demo. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we've got a demo here, very simple uh, universal app. It's got a UI just with a button, not set centrally. And all that the code behind does is it uses launch URI async to a URI, which is W10 Tech Preview. So um, I haven't got any protocol handlers on the device at the moment. I'm going to do this on, on the phone. So let's run this and uh, see what happens with uh, no apps installed to handle it. Uh, now, actually, I'm going to hit, hit the button, and actually, nothing at all happens at the moment. Now, normally, you'd expect it to come up with a dialogue saying, uh, do you want to go to the store? And it will take you to the store and give you a list of apps that uh, are already registered in the store. Uh, but that's actually not working in these bits at the moment. So that will happen later on. So nothing at all happening at the moment, but I'm now going to install a couple of other apps. So also in this solution, I've got up here, I've got two apps that are essentially identical. One's called First Protocol Handler. The other is called Second Protocol Handler. Um, and in their manifest, they declare down here in the extensions a uh, protocol extension. So they are, pro they are registering to say, I can handle the W10 Tech Preview URI scheme. And... Uh, the uh, and the the main screen went and also sorry in the app.xaml.cs um, there's uh, some code in here that handles here we go on activated handles a protocol activation and if it does it simply navigates to main page in this example and on main page in the first one you just get a little bit of a text saying you're in the first WT Tech Preview protocol handler and I'm sure you won't be surprised to know that in the other one which is identical registers for the same protocol it just says you're in the second WT W10 tech preview protocol handler so this has the same protocol damn declaration so got two apps that both handle this protocol uh, let's uh, just deploy those guys to the phone as well deploy it that's gone and the other one Let's deploy that. So that's gone as well. So now we can run our main app. So still the startup project is still our, uh, our simple little client here. So now we run the main app, hit the button when it loads. 
And now we get this disambiguation dialogue. So uh, it happens the same, works the same on desktop. Uh, said on the desktop, it also allows you to go to the store to choose an app. Um, but yeah, now you've got two, and this is the this is the kind of eight point one behavior. So I can choose uh, that uh, I want the uh, yes, but I do it better one. And we're now in the second W ten Tech Preview Protocol handler. Now on desktop, it would remember that. Um, and it would always then go to the, the same one. Uh, but on the phone, it's different. On the mobile, it's different. You always get this disambiguation dialogue. Um, so, but this is by design, you know, so that the user can choose to uh, uh, select whatever. If it, Imagine it was a PDF reader or something like that. They might have two different ones on there. So it's perfectly valid for them to be able to switch between them, uh, which is fine. But you may wish to have a app to app communication where you are going to a specific one of those so that disambiguation dialogue is not going to come up so let's just implement that now to do that you need to know the package family name uh, let's say we always want the first protocol handler uh, so i'm just going to uh, um, add into this uh, the um, into here i'm going to put into uh, just right to the debug window um, just resolve that using system.diagnostics debug dot uh, write line and I'm going to write to here the uh, the package family name the code to do that is uh, windows dot application model 